A question came up in the eLearning Heroes forums today about whether you can create a course and articulate storyline where you have multiple branches, but you display just one branch randomly to the learner. And this is really cool because it's actually very easy to do this. What we're looking at here is the story view of an example. So here's how it works. You can see on the far left, I have this main scene. This is what every learner completes. And then I've also set up three different branches of content over here. I've got topic A, topic B, and topic C. And I've placed each one of these in its own scene just so that it would be really easy for me to kind of organize and visualize stuff. And you can see I've also used a different color and a different character for each uh, branch, just so that would be really easy to tell the difference. So over here at the left in our main scene, I've got an intro slide and a wrap up slide. And then I've got a little bit of magic in between here. This is called a draw from a question bank. And this is what enables us to display content randomly. And what's neat about question banks is that you can actually use them for any kind of slide. You don't have to use them for just questions. So what I've done is I've used a question bank for content slides. And if we double click to open this, you can see this is what my question bank looks like. It's got just three slides in it. And up here at the top, you can see I've marked this option that says draw questions randomly. And I've also said I only want to display one slide from this question bank. So the learner's only going to see one of these three and it's going to be at random. Now here's the cool thing. On each of these slides, what I did is I modified the trigger on the next button so that it doesn't just go by default to the very next slide in the course, which of course, be, you know, would be the wrap up slide. We don't want that. What I've done is I've changed the trigger on the next button to jump to the appropriate branch, depending on which of these slides gets displayed. So let me close this and I'll show you what I mean here. So here are the three slides in our question bank. And over here in the trigger panel, if we open this trigger up, this is the trigger on my next button. It used to say branch to the next slide, but I changed it to jump to the appropriate slide in my um, three scenes that I set up. So in this case, we're looking at topic A, so I'm branching them to the rest of topic A when they leave this slide. And same for this blue one. This one goes to topic B, and then the brown one here is going to go to the rest of topic C. So it's really that easy. And the only other thing I did, if we jump back to story view here, was I change the trigger at the end of each of these branches. So like, for example, on this brown one, topic C, I changed the next button's trigger to jump to the wrap up slide. So that, that way, what happens is they would see the intro slide, they'll see the draw from the question bank, which is going to branch them to one of these topics. And then when they get to the end of the topic, they branch back to the final slide in the course, the wrap up slide. So let's go ahead and preview this and you can see what I'm talking about here. And I did leave the menu over here intact. Um, if you choose to include a menu in your course, you'd probably want to hide some of these things from appearing in the menu because this is going to be confusing to the learner if they see all these topics listed. But I left them all here just so you could see where we're going. So here's our intro slide. We'll go ahead and click next to view our question bank, which is going to display one of those three slides randomly. So in this case, it happens to be the slide for topic B. So from here, what's going to happen is we're going to branch to the remaining slides in topic B. So we'll click next. There's another slide from topic B, and then we'll see one more. So you can see right now we're in topic B, and then we're going to jump back to our wrap up slide from here. And there we go. So the next time we view this, you know, we might see topic A, we might see topic C. It's all going to display at random. So question banks are pretty cool. If you need a little help with how to set up or use question banks, what I would recommend is that you check out our tutorials in eLearning Heroes. We've got one on creating and editing question banks, which you see right here. And then we've also got another one on drawing from question banks. So if you're looking for those, what you can do is come up here to the search window and type either of those titles and hit the go button and you should find what you're looking for. So I hope that helps. I'm looking forward to hearing how everybody's experimenting with question banks to display random content like this.